Rock Jumper here and uh, I'm currently in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Normally I'd be leading a Texas spring tour right now for migration down there, but with the schedule being changed dramatically, I'm currently staying in Wyoming and uh, we're lucky here. We still got wide open spaces, easy social distancing, so we can still go out birding. Today we're going to head to the Hereford Ranch, which is a local migration hotspot. It's a bit windy, a bit cool. Maybe some migrants will have arrived. So we'll go check it out. We got our scope, binoculars, and most important of all, coffee. Let's go. Crow Creek, which flows through the Hereford Ranch. It's the biggest patch of riparian vegetation around with lots of cottonwoods and shrubs and very attractive for nesting species and also migrants. Today is the last week of April. We're expecting short distance migrants. So let's go take a look and see what we can find. Uh, there are lots of robins in the background here. I hear a red-breasted nuthatch, a territorial song sparrow is already singing. Let's see what else we can dig up and how many species we end up with at the end of the morning. American robins are short distance migrants and many have already arrived from points further south. Some of them may stay to breed while others will continue north. Belted kingfishers are also migratory here. And this individual, this is a male, has just arrived and will most likely set up a nesting territory right here along Crow Creek. White crowned sparrows are passage migrants in Wyoming. House finches are resident in Wyoming, particularly in towns and cities. Here's a male. Western meadowlarks are a classic prairie species. So we've seen some American robins, which are common here. Song sparrows are setting up breeding territories. Common grackles are around, northern flickers. But uh, the surprise was a, the first white-crowned sparrow for the season here. Uh, it's been a really late spring, so they seem to be arriving a bit late, but we had excellent views of it. And right now we're gonna head a bit further into the riparian area here and see what other migrants we can find. Common greckles vacate Wyoming during the winter months and have now returned in April for nesting. They are conspicuous and noisy. During migration, you never quite know what to expect, especially in a migrant trap like this Hereford Ranch here in southeast Wyoming. And we were just walking through this riparian shrub and a small bright yellow bird flushed up. We were able to track it down, incredibly a male hooded warbler. A species much more typical of the southeast and eastern United States, a vagrant in Wyoming. We were able to follow it a bit, got some great photos and videos, and uh, just an exciting find and another reason to get out every spring and, and look for migrants.
So here's a great example of some really old cottonwood tree that grow along the Crow Creek here. And these are really an island of trees in the short grass prairie that dominates this part of Wyoming. So they're attractive to migrants and nesting species alike, especially there are a lot of insects here and water available. So after this excitement with the hooded warbler, we're going to continue to some other patches here on the ranch and see. Spotted towhees are also short distance migrants that breed in Wyoming, and they have just started arriving in numbers during this last week of April. So we arrived at a small stand of planted conifers here. We just had great views of displaying ruby crown kinglet. And now we're on the hunt for a sapsucker. The red tailed sapsucker is the common species of sapsucker in this part of the U.S. And you can clearly see the evidence of it being in this area with these holes that have been drilled by a sapsucker all throughout the bark of this pine right here. So I hear some self-tapping. Let's go have a look. This is a male red-naped sapsucker, which is the typical species of the Rocky Mountains. Northern flickers frequently excavate nesting cavities in the large cottonwood trees on the Hereford Ranch. This particular individual is actually of the yellow shafted subspecies, which is much more typical of the eastern U.S. Here, red shafted and yellow shafted flickers meet. Here are two male red shafted flickers for comparison, the more typical subspecies of the west, with red malers and red underwings. I just found a surprise great horned owl on a day roost. So I'm going to go out there and see whether I can get some photos, some uh, video footage. Not going to get too close. I don't want to disturb it, but definitely a surprise for the day. Great horned owls are the most frequently seen large owl species in Wyoming. And they use large mature trees for roosting and for nest sites. This Swainson's hawk spent the winter in South America and just arrived on its breeding grounds in Wyoming. It's a great late April morning here at the Hereford Ranch. We saw quite a variety of short distance migrants and had some seasons first. Uh, orange crowned warbler, house wren, myrtle warbler, white crowned sparrow. They all arrived recently. I even saw some cliff swallows fly through. So let's take a look and see how many species we tallied. I'm just gonna plug it into eBird and finish up here. And it looks like we tallied 34 species for the morning. Probably a bit below average, but it's been a late spring. Like I said before, it's been cold. But uh, we had a great morning, really highlighted by the surprise male hooded warbler and the roosting great horned owl. So until next time, stay safe, stay well, and I hope to see all of you in the field as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.